So I'm recording this video in a way that is different than what I normally do, and I'm doing it uh, on a time where I should be asleep, and this is a format that I would normally use for maybe a Patreon video, something like that. But instead, I want to try this format as something I can do when I'm not able to stream, because... As of right now, when I do my topics, when I do anything on my channel, I am locked to the streaming sphere. If I am not live, I am not producing content. If I'm not able to make uh, it to a live show because I have migraines or everything hell and handbasket together have come all at once, like as has happened recently, uh, then, yeah, it kind of behooves me a little bit. Oh, son of a... Well, you know, it's fine. It's fine. We'll just die again. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Nothing bad ever happens. Nothing bad ever happens to me. Nothing bad ever happens to me. Uh, but I wanted to actually make a video talking about a phenomenon that has happened on my channel recently. And it's something that happened slowly, and I didn't even notice until it had fully taken over practically everything that I did. And I realized it while I was doing research to figure out what videos I wanted to tackle with Vice Rhino during Twit Tweets, because normally Rhino would bring the news articles and I would bring my ugly mug, but here lately, uh, news articles weren't being provided by Rhino, not in any negative way, but just we were focusing more on the tweets. So I was like, let's go ahead and get some news articles out down as well. And as I was going through my video request section, I saw that a good majority of the articles had to do with trans issues. And as I tried to think about the different things I would like to research and talk about on stream with Rhino, it all just kind of came down to trans issues again and again and again. Now, why has that been happening? An astute observer might note that, well, the alt-right and other people of their ilk, even people who note themselves as centrist for whatever weird reason they think that that term applies to them, those people tend to focus a lot on trans issues right now. Now, people who've watched my channel long enough know that this has come mostly as a result of Christopher Rufo uh, making sure that the... Pendulum has thrown itself very far on the anti-trans side of things, and as a result, uh, we are seeing a lot more anti-trans rhetoric on the right. That's just kind of how things have flown. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I need to focus on it as much as I do. Um, you know, for those who don't know, my channel started as an atheist channel, talking about philosophy and going into different forms of religiosity and doing debunks on pseudoscience and... Well, hmm, had to pop my neck there for a second. That's just not the butt of my channel as much now. I still have the Dangers of Woo series. It's a series that I would like to return to, but it's a series that's really hard to produce content for, given my current style. Obviously, that informs why I've been doing mostly, you know the type of react to bill, react to politician, react to pundit content that I've been doing lately, but it doesn't exactly line up with the trans thing. Now, a decent chunk of that is because people who I care about very dearly are trans. You guys have seen Nova on the channel, he's a good friend of mine, and he lives in Florida, and that means that a lot of what happens to him makes me not feel so terribly great, because DeSantis land is not a fun place to be. Uh, it, you know, one one step left of Disney, uh, one step right of Adolf Hitler. So, not a big fan of all that, and that might... Stuff like that may be contributing a little bit. I don't want to sit here and go, ah, here's the list of all of my trans friends that I care about, and this is why I've been making a lot of content about trans issues. No, I'm not going to do that. That's That's silly. I don't need to do that. But I've been noticing that so much of the rhetoric, even from people who consider themselves liberal or in the center of things, it, it, it all seems to be focusing on trans people. And maybe it's that most of my 
response has literally been in response. Can I use this sword? No, I can't. Of course not. Why would I have gotten sword training on a level 700? Um, it may very well be that I've just been reacting to the zeitgeist as it is, and my channel will always be reacting to the zeitgeist as it is. My channel was built during one of the third resurgences of atheist content. We have had a lot more atheist content creators who have started since I started my channel, uh, and that particular brand of content has grown on its own with its own viewership and its own fans and all of that stuff. Please tell me I can... Oh, dear. This is not going to be fun. Um, that particular brand of content has grown without me, and I've grown without focusing on that kind of content. Uh, I've also put myself in a situation where I'm going to die because I thought I could pull this dark sprite without uh, that mini-boss there. So, there we go. That's fun. Dying is great. World of Warcraft Classic is a game that is built for you to have fun and relax, and it definitely does not beat you down for making bad decisions. Ever. Uh, we definitely did not have all of us wipe and gnomer gone three hours ago. That didn't happen either. So maybe it's my channel's reaction to the social zeitgeist. Maybe it's that. Or maybe, more likely, it's that personal guilt has to do with it a little bit. For those who've watched my channel long enough and heard me blather on about the stories, I used to be pretty transphobic, and maybe there's a part of me that is working through that guilt, and this is my way of working through it. Can I actually resurrect outside of the cave there? That's cool. Um, maybe it's that. I don't know. Ultimately, I don't know if it really matters. What matters is that there's another thing we gotta talk about, and it's not just my channel's recent focus on trans issues, but also the fact that, if I'm being honest... I've been starting to feel a lot more like electoralism is not the only way to go through with things. Now, granted, I've always viewed that, but it's one of those things that's been solidifying itself in my brain a lot more. There's certain kinds of direct action that we need that will cause change. Now, obviously, there's the uh, pile of bricks conspicuously located near a protest kind of direct action uh, that certainly gets things in the media and definitely brings people uh, in on the conversation and you get the people who consider themselves liberal left of center going well why were they so violent as their human rights were being stripped away there's that kind of thing and on a platform like youtube i can't actually condone those kinds of actions if anybody wants to know why i haven't taken any time to talk about all the myriad of ways in which political violence could be uh, shown, it's because this is not the platform for it. As far as YouTube is concerned, I cannot advocate for that. Now, somebody may report this video and be like, aha, look, he's advocating for political violence. No, that's not what I'm doing. What I'm doing is saying that at a very base level, the online spaces that we habitate are not the best places to try to talk about stuff like that and a lot of times violence in places like protest comes up mainly as a reaction to police brutality to other types of violence and violence in a protest for trans rights will likely be coming up as their rights are being stripped away in various states i've said in multiple videos this is the end result that a lot of people don't seem to want to understand is going to happen no matter what if things keep going the way they're going. And it's not just news media sensationalizing things. Okay, I need to run this way. And maybe I will be able to break out of that particular enemy's grasp. Maybe. Possibly. Please? Please leave me alone. Okay. Okay. At the very least, I pulled him away from where he was, which is something. 
That's evasions. That's fine. I can deal with evasions. Uh, but violence is kind of an end result that will likely end up happening more and more often as people who are disenfranchised consider themselves disenfranchised. It doesn't matter. As people who are disenfranchised, notably right now, trans people, deal with that disenfranchisement more and more, their reaction to it is going to be more and more times where violence might happen. And not in the, hey, look at this Nashville shooter thing that happened. This is definitely uh, trans violence on the rise. No, not stuff like that. I mean, protests happening more often and protests that are happening more often becoming more and more dangerous to be at for practically everyone. Now, we can recognize this as an inevitability. We can recognize this as something that's just going to end up happening more. Stonewall, after all, was a riot in and of itself, and that led to the pride parades we have now. But there's another angle to that that I want to focus on, and that's not just the fact that me as a creator on YouTube cannot, per terms of service, on any platform that I'm on, talk about political violence, endorse political violence, uh, give you ways in which you can exercise political violence. And moreover, I can't tell you that any political violence that anybody might have just might have and uh, might have done was justified. I can't. I also uh, feel like I'm angry now because the dude that I was trying to kill earlier has been killed. Uh, by somebody else who likely also couldn't solo him and was waiting for somebody to pull all of the ads away from him. That is just precious. That's fine. I'm not upset. You're upset. But it's the types of rhetorical tools that will get used as this inevitability of violence continues. As more and more bills uh, get slated against trans people, there's really only a couple of ways that we can react to them. One of them is forcing federal policy. I know I mentioned that electoralism can't be our only tool, but it's a damn fine one when we still have democracy as usable. I could have sworn that was an enemy. Turns out that was just a plan. Um, finding some way to try to get trans rights federally enshrined would be a very good way to go. And I don't mean an executive order from the president because executive orders can be rewritten by the next president. And if we have a Trump or a DeSantis in 2024, which is likely, I don't like that likelihood, but it's there. If we end up getting that scenario where we get a conservative president next, it is very likely that any policies that are put in via executive order right now will just be overwritten by the next president. That is the strength and also the weakness of the executive order. It can be brought in by a president, but it can also be brought down by a sitting president just as easily. What we need is something that avoids the state's rights conversation entirely. As of right now, there have been, and I've said it multiple times, there have been well over 100. Well over 100. Approaching 200. I haven't checked in the last few weeks. We might be past that point. Um, Anti-trans bills that have been proposed in various senates and various houses. But they have mostly, not all of them, mostly all been state level. Here's the tricky thing with electoralism. Uh, sometimes dark sprites start evading your stuff, even though you are still fighting them. That's weird. I don't know how to feel about that. Oh, okay, so we're back to fighting. Weird. Wow, well, Classic is not a buggy game, I swear. Um, We get into this weird scenario where the only people we can truly talk to are our state reps. We can, you know, kind of get in contact with our House of Representative people. They're easier to get in contact with than our senators. Uh, we can get in contact with our senators as well, but ultimately we run into a problem that federal law is something that a lot of us are just kind of disenfranchised from. Even someone like me who's just, you know, a fucking cishet white dude, I don't have any connection 
where federal law is concerned. I have no way of getting in there and changing any hearts and minds. A multi-tiered strategy is required, one where protests, direct action, talking to representatives, basic electoralism, and also talking with your friends and families and winning over hearts and minds are all important, but there's that blank spot there. This is a blank spot that we've run into with Roe v. Wade as well. The right to abortion was enshrined for the longest time because of the Supreme Court mandating it, basically. And then the Supreme Court was able to take it away because, some, for some reason, for 50 years, Democrats in their ineptitude decided that they didn't want, for whatever reason, uh, to try to enshrine Roe even when they had House majority, Senate majority, and the presidency. During the times where we've had that two-year window where all of that was available, and they just didn't? This runs us into a couple issues. We recognize the need to enshrine these things federally, because if we don't enshrine trans rights, so rights to HRT, rights for doctors to give adequate gender-affirming care to not only adults, but also to children. And when I say trans care for children, I am specifically talking about uh, at early ages, we allow social transition, changing of names, changing of, uh, of wardrobe, uh, changing of you know potential conversational roles, and nothing more than that, which is what is required anyway per the research we've done on trans people for years leading up into the ability to use puberty blockers shortly after onset puberty begins and then after five years of puberty blockers allowing for HRT for a year or two uh, usually starting about the age of 16 the same age we allow people to drive is it okay to put people in a steel box that's going to get them fucking killed, but not okay for them to handle their dysphoria? I don't know. You tell me, idiots that think that child labor is okay, but kids paying taxes is also okay, but them getting to vote is not? Square all of those pegs. Have fun with all of that, you fucking idiots. <sighs> Where I was going with that, that little rantoid there, was that we already know we cannot trust Democrats to enshrine trans rights, rights to HRT, rights to uh, gender affirming care of all types, rights to therapy, rights to shelters for them when they are kicked out of their own homes, as is something that I am currently dealing with right now. Not me getting kicked out, but of course the Arachne situation. These are all things that we need to be fighting for, but how the fuck do we do that? How do you force federal elected officials to enshrine your rights? How do you do that when it is not at the state level, but at the level of the country? And I'm sure there's going to be somewhere that's someone that says, like, actually, no, states' rights are super important. We need to be defending states' rights. States' rights uh, naturally are the way to go. Uh, if we don't have states' rights, then it's all tyranny all the way down, and my guy, I'm just, I'm, I'm so tired of that conversation. I'm tired of that conversation because it makes the awkward axiomatic claim that somehow geography can dictate morals. I, no, I disagree entirely. I don't think geography says jack shit about what is right and what is wrong. So now that we got that out of the way, how do we do this? How do we manage that particular... Okay, I'm not gonna lie. That was actually kind of cool. That was actually kind of cool. I liked that. I liked that. We're gonna we're gonna invite you to a group. That was that was neat. I appreciated that on a deep personal level. <laughs> um so how do you get federally supported trans rights? How do you manage that? I can tell you how to organize a protest. I can tell you how to start the sowing seeds of a union. 
Uh, I can tell you a lot of things about, you know, what to do for your own personal safety for your house and home and all that other fun stuff. I can tell you how to get in contact with your representatives. I can tell you how to get involved in voting. I can tell you how to research for all of that. I can tell you how to do all of these individual important things for living in the democracy, republic, whatever that we're in. But I can't tell you how to force the federal government to do its job. Can I shoot you? Huh. Weird. And that's a struggle that I've been having a lot lately. So not only do I have my content focusing more and more on trans issues, but I also find myself woefully inept in answering that particular question. What do we do to enshrine the rights and protect the rights of people who need it when rights of other people who need them have been stripped away because of the failures of the party that is supposed to be taking care of that? The party that is... Holy shit, why is this cave so glitchy? I am going to blow a gasket. And maybe this is something that I just need to do more research on. Maybe this is something that greater minds than me have already figured out, and it's just a matter of numbers, or it's just a matter of time, or it's just a matter of something. My worry, though, is that the wheels required to engineer the scenario where we are adequately taking care of everybody's rights properly and doing so at a federal level and doing so not through something as shaky as the Supreme Court, and I can't believe I'm having to say that. There is no world in which the, the Supreme Court should be a shaky path. That should not be a thing. And yet somehow... We live in the reality where it is. We also live in the reality where this rogue managed to get up here, and I cannot for the life of me figure out how they did it. I am so perplexed. I guess I'll run my way around the other way. Awkward. Um, so this is where I have to ask people in my audience who might be a little more researched in this, might have a little more experience with this, what do you do? What do you do here when all hope seems lost? Not that we are in a hopeless situation. I don't think we are. I just don't necessarily understand the mechanics involved. Because mechanically, we have already experienced... Oh, okay, I see how you did it. I see how you did it. That's clever. That's a clever use of the environment. Too bad I suck at it. Too bad I suck at it. We'll manage it. We'll manage it. Is it is it that way? Hail to the night. Alun be praised. So, like I said, I don't think the situation is hopeless. I don't think we're in a situation where things cannot be rectified or cannot be improved. And if we somehow get to that situation, then there will be a lot more than Arachne leaving the states. And I will probably be doing a lot more to facilitate some of the leaving of the states. Uh, a couple of people in response to the Arachne video have actually uh, contacted me saying, hey, uh, there are some organizations that are made for the purpose of getting trans people asylum in other countries uh, that are currently doing X, Y, and Z. I say that because I haven't done research into them yet. Um, they've asked me if I want to learn more about them. The, the answer to that is yes, I do. So in the meantime, though, this is my home. This is the place I was born. This is the place I was raised. This is the place that I want to improve this country. So 
while yes, making sure that trans people have asylum is a wonderful short-term goal, it's a wonderful thing to get multiple people out of the scenarios that they're in, it doesn't solve the root issue of how we got here and how we solve it, how we get out of this. We as a culture got into this mess as we are. Some could argue that we've always been in this mess and we are simply throwing kerosene on a fire that's been lit for years. But everything I've listed is a thing that I understand the mechanics behind. I understand talking to your representatives before and after elections. I understand poly, uh, party politics on, you know, the state level. I understand all of that stuff. What I don't understand is how you get the government of your country, the, the full swath of it, the not state level mandate, but the federal mandate. How we get that to happen. We've done it before, obviously. Doing that is, you know, what allowed us to tackle things like Jim Crow laws. It allowed us to tackle things like slavery in general in the United States. Not perfect, obviously. Otherwise, we wouldn't have prison slavery as a thing still. But obviously, we as a country have done this in the past. We have managed this in the past. Now we're in the present and the right to a woman's body was taken away, and at the state level, rights to multiple things that trans people need are being taken away, bit by bit, right by right, one by one, and the right is doing the strategy that most people on the left have pointed out they will do since, well, since before I started making leftist content. They start out by saying, hey, we are going to protect the kids. We are just trying to make sure that kids uh, aren't being abused in these situations. We're protecting us from the trans groomers. And then suddenly it turns into hitting drag queens who aren't even trans, hitting adults who have been on HRT for years and stripping their rights away one by one. I am on. Somehow the... Uh, party of individual I can finally move on to other individual matters. liberties uh, you, loves you. taking away those individual liberties. Stars guide you. So, I need to figure out how we do this again. Maybe the answer to it is looking at not the way that history is taught in America that has a very, very whitewashed version of how civil rights were achieved in America for people of color, achieved to a degree, not to the greatest degree possible, obviously. Maybe it's looking at that history a little more. Or maybe, just maybe, there's some other strategies that need to be employed that I'm not quite thinking. Maybe some of those strategies are things that I'll never be able to advocate for properly on YouTube. I don't know. A lot of this is outside my purview. And I want to be the best advocate that I can. I want to do what I can on my channel, because as my channel has been focusing more on trans rights, I want to make sure that I'm doing it the right way. Pointing out that when people's fears are there, those fears are valid. Pointing out when people feel that they need to defend themselves, that feeling is valid. But also pointing out that there's a time and a place for things. There's a time and a place even for violence. And if anybody wants to call me out on that one and saying, ah, you see, Cyrus has gone full SJW. He wants to incite violence everywhere. No. I'm pointing out that for people who do not believe that there is never, for people who believe that there is never a time and place for violence, you've never been in a fight. At a base level, you've never been in a fight. You have never had the need to defend yourself. And if you have had the need to defend yourself, but you simply believe that that right has never been there at a federal level, then ask yourself, what country do you live in? Do you live in the United States? Do you live in the country that's entire mythos literally begins and ends with bloodshed, not only of native people in the country, but also of our own people, of the people who we came from when we left Britain and came here. 
Is it truly never an option? Ever, ever, ever? When historically it was the answer to World War II? When historically it was the answer in the Revolutionary War? Really? Are we really, are we really gonna die on that hill? I understand the TOS one. I understand that. I can't advocate for anything. But really, truly and honestly, another fun paradox that I've noticed uh, is that in Georgia, we have what's called a state tax. Not everywhere has a state tax, but we have a state tax here in Georgia. So what happens if you're a trans person in Georgia and your rights are being stripped away in Georgia? What happens come tax season? Do you just fund the people who are stripping away your rights? Is that just how you have to accept that? How do, you, how do you square that circle? How do you square that one being okay? And this is the paradox I find myself in because I am an advocate for taxation. Taxation is incredibly helpful when it comes to making sure that elect officials can do their jobs and we can get things like infrastructure built up, roads, schools, housing when we are actually using federal funds for it, hospitals when we are actually using federal funds for it, these are things that we need to be able to fund, and the way we fund them is with taxes. I think that that is a good thing. But the paradox comes in when I have to sit here and ask myself, how in the flying fuck do you have a world where trans people are losing their rights and they have to take a portion of their paycheck to fund the annihilation of their human rights. What, what world do you square yourself in there? Even if you're a Republican, even if you are a person who believes that trans people deserve to have their rights taken away, their rights to HRT, their rights to therapy, their rights to having a childhood that is not fraught with abuse and dysphoria, even if you believe that those rights deserve to be stripped away, do you also paradoxically believe that trans people should be forced to fund that? These are the types of things that I don't you have talk about on my stream as much as well, brave because on my stream I like to have when I can help it more solidified thoughts less meandering ones ones that don't go off into a thousand tangents but then I find myself here at four in the morning six hours away from taking my roommate to work, eight hours away from doing Sunset City, episode 100, mind you, if you guys want to go watch Sunset City, episode 100 comes out today, and that would be really cool. Uh, but I find myself here at this time of night with these thoughts in my head, unable to go to sleep, playing a comfort game, wondering why you weren't in my guild. And there's nowhere for these thoughts to go. I can either sit there and wrestle with them until I finally fall asleep, which is not the healthiest thing in the world, or I can do something productive with them. Maybe make a video like this. Maybe talk about this this way. I know Vosh does similar things where something happens really, really soon, and he needs to address it quickly, so he makes an unedited video that goes up on his channel that doesn't have the chat or anything else there, and it's just kind of an understood thing for his channel. Well, maybe I'll take that same formula and do it here. I mean, why not? I've certainly got a lot of these late-night thoughts that just come to my mind, and who knows? Maybe y'all will respond positively to something like this. Maybe something like this is good. And maybe I can get an answer to some of those questions that I was having in any case, where I just don't know what the right path forward is here, because... Unfortunately, the right path forward feels like Greetings. a point of no return. That's what it feels like. Hello. You need to make your stitches smaller, adventurer. Fewer items will slip out of your quivers and ammo pouches. Besides, no one likes a lumpy tunic. Well, thanks for that. Thanks for that. So, I don't know. 
This is where I land myself. When it's a video that I'm making on a stream, I know where to end. I know where to hit the, the button. When I've ran out of coherent thoughts, when I've ran out of information on the article, when I've hit the point where I have to throw the conversation back to you naturally, that's where I end the video. I don't know where to end it here. Because these aren't the only thoughts on my mind. But those are the most prudent ones, and I figure if I tried to throw everything in one video, I'd end up with a six-hour-long video that is meandering and more meandering than this one is, and has no actual purpose and gets nothing done. So, yeah. In order, what do you guys think about where the channel is sitting right now? I am going to keep doing what I'm doing, irrespective of everybody's opinion. Things that I feel need to be addressed, I'm going to address. But also, how do you feel about the awkward paradoxes that I've thrown there? Especially if you're a person in my audience who is conservative and, again, believes that those human rights are not actually human rights and deserve to be stripped away. How do you square that with the funding of that by the people whom it is being stripped away from? And... What are you afraid of? If you're liberal, left-leaning, what have you in my audience, what path forward do you see to achieve the future that you want? Moreover, what the fuck are you doing to help improve that future? What are you doing to make that happen? But if you're conservative in my audience, what things are you afraid of happening? What are you concerned about? This is assuming that any of you made it to the end of this video. Not only is the likelihood of that lower because this is a, a meandering rant video at four in the morning, but also, on top of that, I have the sneaking suspicion that most of my conservative audience does not actually watch videos all the way through. Uh, I believe that people like, uh, what, Ricardo T., a Hulk Hogan fan, um, it used to be... Uh, Arcade Soviet, though I haven't seen him replying on things in a long time. Uh, a lot of people like that, and I am going to say their names here, because why the fuck not? You reply publicly, I should be allowed to say things publicly. Why are you afraid? What are you concerned about happening? If trans people have their rights, what do you think happens to you? Greetings. What do you think you should be worried about? What kind of world are you concerned about coming to be? That's something that I'd really like to figure out. Because ultimately, in a world where trans people get to be happy, what changes for you? Denied. For the cis dude who isn't trans and hasn't thought about it for even a, a fraction of a second, do you think that trans people just go away when you take their rights away? Goddess, bless you. Do you think that that's a good thing? Do you think that, that like, what, like, what's the goal? What's the aim? What world are you afraid of coming to pass? I guess let me know that in the comment section as well. Anywho, this video has gone on quite long enough, and I am uncertain of how I even want to put a thumbnail on it. Is this a, a thing where I commission Yara to do a thumbnail like I normally do? Or is this a situation where I just kind of sit back and let I things be things? First aid techniques. Thank you for telling me you can train me in first aid techniques. I appreciate that. Like, I don't, I don't know what to do with this particular series, if I will continue it or what have you. So, yeah, let me know what you think about that, too. Uh, maybe I'll put up a filler thumbnail and Yara will take care of something afterwards. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but let me know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below about all of the things that I said. And, well, I guess thank you for listening to my rants. This is, you know, somewhere in the middle of the uh, flowing of thought videos that I would do on Patreon and the regular edited content that I would normally do. This is somewhere kind of in the middle like there. Visit in Tell me what you seek. So let me know. And uh, as always, everybody, insert into video tagline here. <laughs>